Carolina are a massive disappointment to me this year. And I don't like people all of a sudden saying, ah, they're young. They're getting better. Oh, got paid. Yep. I'll never forget that. Svechnikov, <laughs> took it, he bet on himself, but he had an eight-year deal there. Okay. Those guys are getting bait. They have to. They have to. They have to produce now. Eric Jordan Stahl, sorry. Imagine that Eric Stahl. Imagine beginning of the year looking at Buffalo and saying Eric Stahl is going to go further in the playoffs this year than Jordan. <laughs> I don't like a lot of people saying, "Ah, oh my God, Carolina, they're just so young and fun." No, they don't get that excuse anymore. That's been them for a couple of years now. They this is time to perform. I don't care if it's the Cup champions. You still lost. Yeah, Even I, the I think. I, I think, yeah, like if if they pushed it to seven games, let's say, I think we're having a different story because I think this is – did they not lose in five to Boston last year as well? Yeah, and it was kind of the same thing where it was – like you know, they get they, – they, they grinded it out. They got the one game in, and then they just kind of looked like not themselves the rest of the series. They didn't score. In the one game they did, they – took it apart and then just like oh and like like, yeah i think in the past we would have said one of the issues was goaltending and i think putting morazic in that one game did seem to backfire but i wouldn't argue that goaltending was the issue this series no no i thought the delkovich the entire playoffs was really good for them when do we ask the question would sebastian not be performing this way in montreal what would like? I'm just trying to think now. Like, what would be like the domino effect if he actually like that was not matched and he was a, a hab? I don't think Jesperi Kokkinen would be a Montreal kid. Right no, no, I don't. I don't think it would be. Um, there's just a feeling I get there. I don't think he would. I don't think so. It won't no. shift to the left side again. No. no. Um, but, but yeah, back on Colorado. I, I know what you mean. Where you know Dougie Hamilton's already 27. That's Carolina. Some, yes, with Carolina. You said Colorado. Oh, my apologies. Shifting to I'm Carolina. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I kind of felt that too. Like, yo, know, this was a year where they had to go further, more so because of that defense we they have there. That if they lose a main cog in Dougie Hamilton, it's 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 huge. It's going to yeah. be really big for them. And the way the way I kind of see it too is that it was disappointing for me that offense because they have developed so well internally with all the guys that they've brought up and listen, they're, they are quality guys, but they just, they're just missing that it factor in terms of offense outside of that top line. And you could get something that you want out of things, but you know, a Vincent Trocek there, that, that was disappointing to me. A, a Brock McGinn who was getting quite a few minutes that that was disappointing to me. I think that, for the way Carolina was set up, the way that they played, it looked like they just tried to. Okay, this is gonna sound like a crazy, a funny pun. They tried to weather the storm instead of actually <laughs> fighting it off. They did lose Nino Niederreiter. They did, yeah. However, Nino Niederreiter is what's gonna. If Nino Niederreiter is the fabric of your team, then you have the stability of a snowman in the summer. I, I think, sorry, I think what they need is like another offensive threat. Yeah, and I think we were we were also having that discussion in the summer, like before free agency, in that they needed goaltending and they needed another offensive threat. And obviously, I think I have a feeling they were going to go after Leonard, but obviously they didn't. They stuck with their guns. Uh, they call it luck or whatever, but they still have. Nid- Alex Nijelkovic, and now what they need to do this offseason is go out and get an offense, another offensive threat. And the only move they really made was Jesper Fast. And it's like, I don't think that was enough. And now you're in an offseason where you have to worry about, okay, what are we doing with Dougie Hamilton? Yeah. And it's like, man, like if you just got it right last year, and they have lots of cap space. Like they have twenty-seven million dollars in cap space. Mm-hmm. Um, they have quite a bit of work to do. But if they just got it right last year, now all we have to focus on is Dougie Hamilton. Yeah. You think they revisit what we mentioned before, where there was a bit of that rumor where they look at Columbus now? It's like, hey, let me listen in on one of your goalies, or do they stay with Alex Melkovich? 
I thought you were about to say Linus. I'm so like, was I. <laughs> I, but I think we, we can agree that I thought like Nedeljkovic. Again, like when you're scoring like a goal a game, I'll entertain a line eight conversation. Oh, they got money. Maybe, maybe they have the prospects. Like they've drafted pretty well. Yeah. Like talk, take away Morazic's playoffs this year. Like it wasn't great. But I could see them bringing back Morazic and Nijelkovic going into next season. And Sorry, that being so. your what, your tandem. Uh, Morazic would be a, he's a good backup. He's just yeah. uh, I don't know where people get this illusion that Morazic's a good starter. He's never been. So that was a real junior thing because, like, um, not saying that it holds up now, but, it, I, okay, I know I bring this up a lot, but it actually was because he did bring in, like, he did – anchor a really weak Czech team and then he was just one of those guys where they thought all right if Detroit just keeps these guys in the AHL for like five six years he's going to become a starter that's what happened to Jimmy Howard before it all fell off well Jimmy Howard was never special to he wasn't anything special though he was Jimmy Howard he was fine he was he was good like for a bit like we we, we think about last season but he was okay Man, and, and no offense the Czechs are mad every year the Czechs, they haven't had like an amazing young pro. Like, who was the last great Czech player? Uh, Philip like, Zadina. The Panics. Like, the best Czech players of this generation were like Thomas Sattar and, and, and Thomas Pukanix. Both okay. named Thomas. Before that, like Yager, pretty good player, but still. Um, and he was retired from national competition for like Caberlet. a decade. Caberlet. Caberlet, like. Like okay, so like, hey, we got Jordan. We got Jordan. We got whole name Thomas, Thomas Haberle. Another time, it's just it's Thomas. <laughs> and you play for the Czechs. It's like okay, so we got Caberle. Okay, let's go to Olympics with Caberle, and then like the Canadians. Oh hey there, every All Star defenseman in the world. Oh my God, PK's not even playing in like 2010. This is, no, he didn't make the team. I'm thinking the 2014, right? The seventh defenseman on 2014 is like easily the could be the best defenseman in Czech history. No, don't give me this whole thing of, yeah, you're going to look good if you just get shell every night and make a couple say, like, stop it. Okay, I have two current yeah. Czech players. Okay, before we move on, two current good, like, Czech players who are, like, considered the best right now who are active. Okay. 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 David Krejci and uh, Jakob Voracek. Oh, okay. David Pashenak. <laughs> okay, that's – okay, okay, fair enough, fair enough. I'll give them that. Decent player. Decent, Decent player. Decent player. God, I'm looking at the scoring one. I'm like, there's also Andre Palat is there. Um, really? Oh, never mind then. Andre I mean, Palat, Tom, Tomas Hurdle, uh, Habs legend, again, Michael Frolik. To- another Thomas. <laughs> yeah, okay. The, the so, list of basically, is grow. Canada B team is better than the Czech still. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I, so. Okay, maybe not on the goaltending because it's like, you got to think about it. It's like, man, okay, Price in the playoffs shows he's still good. Mackenzie Blackwood did not have a great year. Carter Hart disintegrated. Yeah. It's like it's oh really God. going back to like Flurry and Price next year. I mean, like, hey, listen, you perform in the big stage, you perform in the big stage. Uh, unlike the Hurricanes who can't win the playoffs. Or the Dom Lishizen choice. Who was his choice? Mackenzie Blackwood. I just yeah, but he had a bit he, he was not yeah. great. Yeah, but yeah, but how yeah, do you honestly go to yeah, true. How do you after these playoffs go next year and say, hey there? Mackenzie Blackwood. I mean, I would just... bring I would bring Blackwood simply as the third goalie over and, Carter Hart. Uh, I'd, go, just... I'd bring one of them. Like I, I'd bring one of the two and say, "Here's the experience of being at the Olympics." Like that's gonna... what it is. What are the yeah. chances that they actually play? Right. Yeah, that's the 1998-2002 argument. Where in 1998, Patrick was like, "I'm playing every game," and he did. Yeah. And then 2002, Martin Brodeur is like. After Curtis Joseph started the first game, he played every game. So like you could kind of just risk it and just go, I'm riding with the one goalie. Yeah. Because, well, I think right now it's very clearly Price and Flurry. Yeah, Price, yes. Flurry, and, and then, then one of the young, young guys. Guy. <laughs> yeah. Mike Smith. <laughs> guy who is not going to touch the ice. No. Um, <laughs> not Mike Smith. <laughs> Smith's, yeah, no, no, 